Welcome. With this video, we will be walking through the COVID-19 Community Assessment Update Template and Data Resource Guide. This can be found on the Community Action Partnership website by going to www.communityactionpartnership.com. You can access the template and data resource guide through our Coronavirus Resource page, which is um, clickable through a banner on our home page or through the tools and resources um, section of our website. So you can go to tools and resources down to the resource library and type in a keyword such as community assessment or COVID-19 um, to find that resource. If you do choose to go through our coronavirus resource page, you can um, go to this page and then scroll down to the bottom. You will find the community assessment COVID-19 update template We'll go ahead and access it through this link here. And you can see that we have both a PDF as well as an editable Word document that is available um, that you can use to go ahead and fill in the template um, for whenever you're ready to do so. Also available in a PDF so you can see the formatting locked. So we'll go ahead and view the PDF here since we'll be accessing some of the links and I'll be showing you through the document. Um, we did release this in mid-April, but there might be some updates that um, are included um, with this over time. And so um, there might be additional iterations that are released um, and we'll always include that release date um, on this uh, inside page here. But essentially this resource includes both a template as well as this data resource guide that we're gonna walk through as well. The template can be used by local community action agencies as an addendum to their full community needs assessment in response to the COVID-19 global health pandemic. This is one option of what could serve as a brief needs assessment update for the use of the special CSBG supplemental funding. The template can be used either in whole or in part as determined necessary by the local agency know that the urgent needs of communities across the United States require maximum flexibility for community action agencies to allocate resources to meet local challenges, as well as a minimal administrative burden from state CSBG offices. Due to the block grant nature of CSBG funding, state offices set the policies regarding whether local agencies need to provide an updated community assessment that addresses the COVID pandemic. But if your agency is required to update its community assessment, this template is one tool that you might find helpful to produce that update as easily as possible. So within this template, we'll just do a quick scroll through. You'll see that we have included some pre-filled text accompanied by places to insert local data, examples, um, your agency logo, agency name and information. You'll see these different highlighted sections here in the template are where you can insert your local information. Um, we do have all of this pre-filled text like I mentioned, but what you can do is if there are pieces of it that that you want to edit within the Word document format, um, please feel free to do so to adapt it to your needs. So we'll scroll through here. I'll show you just some of the different sections. Um, we included a section on immediate impacts on the community, local public health response, and we included some different categories here within the template that we thought might be most relevant for agencies to include examples and data on. So health impact, employment impact, um, down to education, human services provision, as well as community resource impacts. But of course, if your local area is experiencing impacts in other areas or maybe not as many um, impacts in some of these areas, you know, those can be added um, you know, or taken away from this listing. Then it goes into anticipated near and long-term impacts. Um, so looking more uh, future forward on these prolonged um, issues that the community might face. Um, and places to insert examples where those might be appropriate. So looking at this data resource guide, I just wanna show you a few of the different tools that we have available um, and or that we are linking in here for you all to access. Um, this data resource guide is um, organized in the same um, kind of format as the template. So it corresponds to the different sections. 
Um, at first, we just have some general resources um, that you can explore. Um, we know that, you know, what we've included in here might not be everything that you want to include. So, um, you know, you can feel free to peruse these sites to find the data that you are seeking. And, um, you know, there, through these variety of tools, um, the CAP Engagement Network is one of the tools that is listed here, and it's a tool that many agencies already use to collect much of the secondary quantitative data for the regular community assessment process. So specifically for purposes of the supplemental funding, we've added an indicator um, within our um, report for um, finding out the number of people in your local area that are um, within 200% of the federal poverty level. So you'll see that section here. Um, so you can access that either through the map room or through our assessment report. Once you go into this assessment report, um, I'll go ahead and pull that up here in a new tab so that we can see that. And you will need to log in at the home page to be able to access this. Here. If you do have any issues, you can always email us and we can get you connected with the um, Engagement Network staff and make sure that you can get logged in. But it's through our regular community assessment report. You can select your local area. You can also select multiple counties if you want to select your entire service area. And the 200% indicator is under the population profile. So you can select that one. You can also select multiple indicators. You can go into the different categories if you'd like, but we'll go ahead and just pull a report only on this indicator for now. And this one just gives you very general information about, um, you know, the number of people, what kind of percentage you're looking at um, in relation to, um, you know, the total population, um, as well as the map. So you can actually go into the map room through this link, but you can also use these different visuals if you'd like, as it compares to your state and national averages as well. Going back to our template, we also have linked in here um, a data table from the Census Bureau. And we'll go ahead and bring this up as well and just show you that this uh, table will give you some further information on selected characteristics for people who are at specified levels of poverty. Um, so you'll see you'll be able to access gender, age, um, race, ethnicity information. And, um, you know, it'll show at those various levels of poverty. So less than 50%, less than 100% um, as you scroll over. And so as you go into viewing all tables, um, you can, you know, search through this data. There's ways to customize the table as well. Um, and so you're able to um, get more information that way if you'd like. Then as you can see, um, you know, we went by section here. So you can, um, you know, look at, you know, your overall impact, health impacts, and try to categorize it that way. So then you can correspond this data right up into that template um, where there's different um, highlighted places to insert that information. Um, one tool here that I do want to demonstrate, because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing, is our COVID, um, well, actually, it, we work with the CARES Engagement Network, but the COVID-19 vulnerability footprint that the CARES Engagement Network um, put together. So if you go to engagementnetwork.org, or you can click through the template, um, you go to the COVID-19 tools and resources page. You'll see that they've created a variety of resources here, um, pulling from a lot of the good data out there right now. Um, and so the one that we're gonna be looking at uh, right now is this vulnerability footprint. And these will give you information on um, various places throughout the entire United States. So it's not uh, just uh, focused on one area or one state. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit about this map and using these different thresholds um, because there's other tools on this site as well that do this similar um, feature and sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So basically these different sliders that you see here, um, so the 
three different pieces that kind of make a, it a vulnerability footprint for COVID-19 is population density, in uninsured population, as well as population age 65 and older. So this uh, first slider here allows you to set the minimum and maximum population density. So if you're in an urban area, um, you might want to increase the minimum to 1,000 persons or more, um, you know, going up to the greatest density. Um, so just kind of depending on what your local area is like, um, you can kind of um, gauge it that way. Uninsured population, the slider allows you to set the range for the uninsured population. So you might want to consider what the national average is, um, you know, as well as what your local community might look like. So the national average is around 9.4%. So if you want to focus on um, something that's greater than the national average, you could slide this up to 10% as the minimum. And then you're looking at um, areas where the uninsured population is higher than the national average. This third slider um, is looking at um, minimum and maximum for viewing populations age 65 and older. Um, so that the minimum slider can be adjusted up to find pockets of the greatest number of elderly in both rural and urban areas. And then this maximum slider um, it can be useful with states where you might want to exclude pockets that include concentrated retirement communities. So after you kind of adjust your sliders where you might want them, um, then you're going to get these different colors here on your map. So the areas in blue are, you know, it corresponds over here to the slider color. So those are the areas with, um, you know, that population density within where you set the range. The areas in yellow are where only the uninsured population threshold is met. So these here areas here. So these areas have high um, rates of the uninsured, but don't meet your threshold criteria for the other two, so it's only this one. Then areas in purple are where only the population age 65 and older threshold is met, so these areas have high rates of people age 65 and older, but don't meet your threshold criteria for uninsured population or population density. Then you have this key here that shows you that the orange areas actually meet two of the different thresholds, and then the red areas meet all three thresholds. So that's where you're getting this vulnerability footprint. Um, and so these are the areas that, um, you know, have high population density, high uninsured population, as well as high, um, you know, density of population age 65 and older. So these are where, the, you know, you have the greatest vulnerability um, and are likely areas where you might want to focus in um, some specific interventions and programming whenever you're looking at, um, you know, how you're going to respond to the needs. Um, so there's a variety of other, you know, tools available uh, related to the COVID-19 through the engagement network, through our um, CAP engagement hub, our needs assessment online tool um, that can be utilized uh, for getting some of this data. Um, we've also have linked in here county health rankings and roadmaps. Um, you know, they have a good area for free and reduced lunch eligibility data. Um, and then, of course, there's different uh, sites here looking at school district data, um, as well as unemployment statistics through the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, so as you then scroll through this uh, resource guide, you know, you see that there's different areas on, you know, where you can go to find information on anticipated near long-term impacts. Then, of course, there's lots of resources here around addressing equity implications. Um, so you can look through these different resources. Um, you know, in a lot of local areas, there's not a whole lot of local data, um, you know, in real time on this uh, topic. Um, but you can um, just kind of look at how it's affecting different racial and ethnic groups differently in general, and then you might have local examples that can supplement some of this information as well. Then here we just cited in our conclusion um, the importance of summarizing key findings and prioritizing your needs um, so that you kind of know where to, you know, focus in on your efforts. Um, and then there's some resources here that kind of help walk you through, you know, what you might need to know as you're looking at uh, drafting out your key findings and prioritizing your needs. 
So as always, please feel free to reach out to us at the partnership if you have any questions on this resource or otherwise. Um, we're always happy to help. Um, and we hope you find this tool useful as one option um, for assessing the needs related to COVID-19 crisis in your local area. So thank you for viewing this video.